of Church of God. Um, happy to be back again this week. I have to admit, I am trying not to be really frustrated. I just did two videos back to back. I had a small window this afternoon and I needed to get them done because um, I have my the women's conference I'm a part of abide next week. So I thought I'll get two done so it kind of covers that that time over over abide so I can really focus. And I did them both and I was feeling great and then I looked and I, I did the same thing I always do. I pressed my record, it counted me down, it like did the counter the whole time. I pressed stop. But in the little square where my face is supposed to be and all my content with all my like my 20 minute video, it was black for both. And I just didn't know what to do. I probably would have cried, but I already cried all morning. So <laughs> it's just my husband asked me, I told him, like, I spent the morning crying. And he's like, oh, he's like, why? And I was like, well, because I'm 35 weeks pregnant and it's been noisy in the house. <laughs> so I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> Redoing the videos is fine. So we're here. And I'm really excited to share with you. Um, this week I'm doing something a little bit different because I have a bide coming up. Um, I just have very busy about, we're like just over a week from the event. So it gets very busy right now. So I decided though to share um, a devotional with you from one of my favorite, favorite women um, that I discovered through, oh, I'm so sorry, oh, pregnant life. Um, I discovered through Instagram and I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with social media. Generally, I'm constantly considering breaking up, but there are some really amazing people. Um, I find, especially I'm a little more active on Instagram, on that uh, platform that are there to speak truth, share the gospel, um, challenge believers, call us higher, encourage, and just be in doing life with us. And so I found uh, Ruth, her root, her name is Ruth Jo Simons. She um, has not only her personal account, which is amazing, you can follow that. I would strongly encourage you to follow her if you need some goodness in your news feed, uh, like your social media feed. Um, she also has a company called Grace Laced. So she is an incredible artist, I think is maybe her one of her first giftings. Um, so she makes these books that are so incredibly gorgeous, not only to look at, but then she fills them with her, with thoughts and um, challenges uh, like around scripture. And she is full of wisdom and is so biblically based. She's very challenging she is the voice that we need right now. So I've really enjoyed following her. She constantly speaks exactly what is going on in my life and in my own heart and my own mind. And then has this beautiful way of like gently and firmly pointing me back to the gospel and, um, yeah, kind of like calling us higher and lifting our eyes to where, where they should be set. So she, and her husband um, are down in the States. Oh, goodness. And she has six boys, and they homeschool. So she's amazing. So this book is called Beholding and Becoming, and it's the art of everyday worship. So it has 16 chapters, and each chapter has, like, just a really short, or, like, a short, well, I guess maybe a bit of a longer devotional than what we're used to. But the first part of the devotional is beholding. We behold God. We behold what he says in his scripture. And then the second part of the devotional is the becoming. How does that apply? What does that look like in real life? Um, so the whole premise of this book is taken from 2 Corinthians. Um, sorry. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 where it says, We all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So um, as believers, as we behold the glory of God and we behold who he is 
to stare intently in awe and wonder of who God is. It's through his spirit then that he transforms us to become like him. So she called her book Beholding and Becoming. And it's really beautiful. She draws um, in her introduction and talks about how we are all worshipers, um, even those who would not say that they follow God. Uh, there's a quote by Richard, uh, no, Paul Tripp. And it says, human beings by their very nature are worshipers. Worship is not something we do. It defines who we are. We cannot divide human beings into those who worship and those who don't. Everybody worships. It's just a matter of what or whom we serve. So she just talks about how, like, every kind of action and choice and thing that we put our hand to is worshiping something or someone. And so the question is whether or not we will use our everyday moments to worship because we are using those moments to worship something, um, you know, in the midst of just our ordinary life, but how we direct our eyes, this is what she says, how we direct our eyes, our minds, our hearts and hands in the everyday will de determine who we ultimately worship and what we ultimately become. We were made to behold him and be transformed in him. The art of everyday worship is the journey from canvas to masterpiece. And this is my invitation to you to be transformed one everyday moment at a time. So the chapter I chose is called Rest is Productive because um, we've been looking at rest a lot and uh, looking at stillness because I know as a mom, it feels like it's like eye rolling laughable, the idea of rest and stillness. Um, and it's becoming more popular in our cult, like our culture demands. We already have busyness as a bit of like this idol and like this, it's like this like badge of honor of how busy we are. But at the same time, we're seeing this rise in the self care, which I don't have anything against self care. Self care is great. I love a hot bath at the end of the day with my sparkly water. Um, I love to light a candle or go to chapters and like do those types of things for sure, for sure. But there's a difference between self care and like godly rest. And God not only like, just like suggests that we rest, he like kind of like he commands it. He models it. Um, and there is so much there for us if we choose to uh, take that rest and make it a priority. Um, so her chapter is called Rest is Productive. So I'm just going to read. be like story time with share, And uh, we're going to read this. And I just have a few thoughts. But it's really just for you to think about. And uh, yeah. When our third man cub was four years old. And she has six now. We experienced a year of him unexplainably waking throughout the night screaming and crying. Troy and I, mostly Troy because he's a very kind husband, Troy's her husband, would be in and out of bed seven or eight times a night that entire year trying to console a little boy who couldn't fully explain whether the problem was pain, fear, or something else. As a young mom at the time with three other boys, two older and one toddler, I was exhausted and exasperated. After a few months of trying everything and feeling incredibly worn out, Troy suddenly started getting up early again each morning, despite sleepless nights. I still remember my disbelief and a bit of defensiveness when he told me he was getting up before the kids to read his Bible and spend time with the Lord. That's great, babe, but how in the world can you afford to get less sleep? His answer will perennially be a favorite reminder. Honey, I can't afford not to. Troy knew that he couldn't live without, and that has been a significant reminder to me as I make priority choices every day. In that season, I equated survival with another few hours of sleep. I am there. But Troy looked to spiritual rest in the Lord as a means to thrive. Time with the Lord is not a magic pill, it's not a formula, not a duty, certainly not an easy button, and not akin to burning incense to appease a distance God. 
It's simply what we're created for, a relationship with him, functioning apart from the fuel of his presence. It's like taking a cross-country road trip with an empty gas tank. It brings to mind another story of one who chose time with the Lord and one who chose what seemed more productive. The familiar account of Mary and Martha hosting Jesus in Martha's home. Luke 10, 38. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. She went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve to serve alone? That's totally me. I'm, I'm definitely a, a Martha. Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Perhaps, like Martha, in our task-mindedness, we forget that rest, ceasing from work and being still before the Lord, is not a luxury. Rest is productive. How often I look at the mess in my home, the incomplete home projects, the table to be set, the meals to be done, the shelves to be dusted, and roll my eyes at the idea of rest, or anyone who might suggest it, But God himself, who rested after six days of creating the heavens and earth, did not set the example for rest to simply give us a break, but rather to be our rest. Like Martha, we spin and toil anxiously over many things and often forget to choose the portion that is most necessary. We think it a luxury to rest because we think everything depends on us. Martha mindset puts my own abilities and resources on center stage, but a merry posture looks to Jesus. James 1, 23 to 24 reminds us that it is not the doing that is the issue, but what drives our faithfulness. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at him goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. That was James 1. 23 to 24. Being a doer is putting into action our heart posture. All the productivity and perseverance we strive for find their fuel in our perspective on true rest. When we see how much we're provided for in Christ, we can be fruitful for his glory because he's fruitful in us. And we can rest because his rest is productive. In our present cultural glorification of busy, we can choose to see our to-do lists, calendars, and schedules differently. It's not that Jesus didn't expect work to be done, meals to be made, and tables to be set. He simply called Martha to recognize opportunity for best in the midst of all that was good. All work, no matter how needed and useful, becomes anxious toiling if not fueled by our most needed sustenance, rest in the Lord. The psalmist says it this way, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Rest is where we remember that he is God and we are not. Rest is where we remember that he holds all things together without our help. Rest is where we remember that God created the time restraints and limitations that we rebel against. And rest is where we remember that he is at work in us, even in the waiting. We might think we can't afford to take time for rest, but really, we can't afford not to. So the rest of God is an invitation from him to work in a way that is not of this world and we're not of this world Um, he knows that the rest is for is for our good and it ultimately is for his glory so I would encourage you this week to take time to rest and now rest looks can be different for different people right like it's not just like there's like a, a cookie cutter rest but this type of rest is talking specifically about 
taking time to rest in his presence, taking time to behold who the Lord is um, and letting that, uh, letting him refill us in that way, um, taking time to cease from our work, yes, but with a bit of a focus as well. So I hope that this spoke to you in some way. Um, I hope that you are maybe learning a little bit more or even just having the Holy Spirit speak to you in a new way about what it means to be, what his rest looks like, what being still before the Lord looks like, um, how it's all so for our benefit and it's like a gift from him and it's necessary. It, we can't, like I love how she said at the end that, you know, we do really have this mindset that we don't have the luxury of rest. Isn't that just like this, this kind of victim mentality that we take on? I do this all the time. This, well, if I don't do it, well, then no one will. And, um, oh, sure, I would love to go um, hang out, but I didn't get this done. And since no one else is offering to do it, I guess I'll have to do it. I'm a very passive-aggressive person as an introvert who does not like confrontation. I do confrontation through my passive-aggressiveness. But um, it, it's so true that, like, rest is not a luxury. We can't afford not to rest. And God has a design for our rest. And it looks different than what the world tells us rest is. Um, and it looks different even though, like, for each of us, what would maybe ways that we connect with the Lord but to take time every day, every week to focus in on him and to spend time in his presence, to get quiet before the Lord and to rest. So it gives him space um, when we take time to behold who he is, that transformation that the Holy Spirit begins to do in us is really wonderful. When we give him space to actually speak he will sometimes convict us. In the Psalms, it says the Lord disciplines those that he loves. Um, he'll draw things out that are not of him so that we can repent and confess. Um, he will, there's so many things. He will encourage us. He will, uh, it's just, it's really wonderful. But we have to give him that time. We have to make room in our schedules submit it back to him. So I hope you have a great week. And if you watch this video and you get to the end, um, if you would pray for the women's event I'm a part of, uh, it meets on Saturday, the 24th, all day. And it looks very different this year. Um, but that's okay. Because the same God is going to be there and he has things that we are. We're just excited to learn and to focus in on him learning about wisdom and and to have the opportunity for him to speak for us to stop from our regular schedules and to to just press into the lord and whatever he has so yeah pray for our bide women's gathering this weekend as we gather together i'd really appreciate that and i hope you have a great week if there's any way that i can pray for you feel free to comment or message me privately um i would i would be honored I would honor, la 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 la, I'd be honored to <laughs> have a great week.